All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We have a dirty new conglomerate traitor in our midst, as you can see. It is the one and only Adam Clegg. Welcome. Hello, thank you. We're going to be taking yet another look at Planet Side 2. You're going to be getting pretty much all the coverage you could possibly want live from the show floor of E3. If you do happen to be wandering around the place looking sheepish, by all means, do come and try the game out. We have stations available here for all three factions. The TR, needless to say, being the most popular station. Um... That's your opinion. It I is. Think, I it think is. the NC is the most popular station. I did interview two people from the NC. Nobody from TR wanted to get interviewed. You found the only two NC players I in the convention. I found the only well two done. NC players. Impressive. <laughs> that is correct. All right, we're going to hop back into the game, folks. Go back to the BS staging area. Which is looking amazing, by the way. Yeah, there's actually a lot of tracer fire going on. The air battle is starting to intensify up there. Yeah, people are starting to get really excited when it goes from daytime to nighttime. They, I think it's something they don't realize that's happening right away. And then the next thing they know, it, it is nighttime. So it's a, a really great feature. Yeah. The moment we're looking at vehicle customization, we don't really... Uh, there's nothing currently available for the Lightning. That's not to say that there won't be. Bear in mind, this is obviously a build 4E3. There's, this is changing on a daily basis over there, isn't it? Oh, uh, correct. Yeah, we've, we tried to give them as much customization as possible for E3. And we're just creating more and more every day. It's going to be something that advances when the game goes live. There will be patches, of course, to bring in new content that people will have access to. Always. Just like any general MMO, since this is an MMO FPS, we will be patching the game. We will be making updates constantly. New customizations, new certifications, all the time. This Lightning player is being very, very sensible, staying as far away from the combat as possible, giving us actually a very nice view of some aerial combat that's going on from there. Yeah, people are starting to learn how to play as they play on these machines. They're starting to realize that it's not always the best tactic to just rush in there. Yeah, you don't want to charge in. And the Lightning is it's nice. It's got a lot of firepower. It packs quite a lot of punch considering its size, but it is it was known as the paper tank for a very good reason. It has a tendency of dying very rapidly. over a different view for the moment. We can show you all 12 here. This is a wonderful opportunity to have a look there at some of the new conglomerate customization for this weapon, the Stiletto. Tell us a little bit about this gun. Um, it's a high-powered rifle. You can see it does a lot of damage. All of our accuracy and all of our stats are there on the screen. Um, it looked like he was putting on some jungle camo or some desert camo. It looks like jungle camo. Um, and he can make those customizations on the fly like he was in the game. And when he wants to equip that gun, he just goes to an equipment terminal, uh, resupplies with his new customizations. This is a very nice gun, by the way. I play NC all the time. I love this. I love this rifle. Looks like it's nice and easy to use. Yo, it takes some skill. Come on. There's Does it? Oh, yeah. It's not like TR where all you do is just hold down the mouse and spam all your bullets until you get the click, click, click to reload. That seems like the most satisfying way to approach the game, though. <laughs> that is one way to approach the game. Ammo packs, most useful for the Terran Republic. Yes. One, one thing we haven't really pointed out to people yet is the fact that factions are not just different cosmetically, or in terms of the vehicles that they get, it's the ideology of the faction comes through in the items you have access to. Yes, all of our factions are very distinct. Um, you'll find that you might play one faction and you might not like it. You play another faction and it feels completely different. And that might be your, more of your playstyle. Some people's playstyle, they like fast firing bullets. Some people's playstyle like slower, more powerful hitting bullets. Um, our Vanu have energy weapons. So it, it's all fit, custom fit to your style. You pick what empire you want to play. I'm going to hop over to a quick interview with one of our players this time around. We, we may see a little bit less new conglomerate bias in the interviews coming forward as Maggie will be taking over the duties of doing just that. We'll be swapping out as the days go on. We'll be continuing to stream this content live to you here from the show floor. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, well, you are currently missing out on the live stuff. So remember to check out twitch.tv slash Total Biscuits. There is a countdown there on the page to tell you when the stream is going to be live. And of course, if you happen to be coming along to E3, or well, if you happen to be here right now, then come along, say hi. There is a presentation you can watch in the theater. You can also check out the game and actually play it. Pick one of the three stations 
Vanu Sovereignty, Terran Republic, or New Conglomerate. Yeah, please stop by. Um, all of the people here are very friendly. I myself love talking about this game, talking with all of the fans. Um, it's one of the enjoyments I get out of working on a game like this. Is At E3, you get to see all of the true Planetside fans coming up to you and saying hi, and just telling you how much they can't wait for this game. So. Please yeah, come been, on by. There's been a lot of enthusiasm for the idea of MMORPS. I've always it's kind of the holy grail of massively multiplayer games. The idea that you can take a first-person shooter, add in the massive part of it, and not actually sacrifice anything to get there. Yes. This is entering the large, large indoor area there, which is where you'll generally find an awful lot of vehicles. So he's going to try and take on a max Ooh, unit. that was close. No, actually, not a max unit. That was a heavy assault, Vanu Sovereignty. He did hit. He did almost take him Test. out, it said 82. Almost. Test. Test is functional. Test. Test indeed. Oh, okay, we're awesome. We're just going to be hopping on over here to an interview right now with Maggie. Take it away. I'm with James. Yes, James. Uh, name is Magician or Misspelled in Planet Side 2. Alright, he's a... Previous Planet Side player? Yes, I've been playing since beta uh, way back when, nine years ago now. What faction did you get to play today? I got to play Vanu Sovereignty and I'm actually Vanu myself, so. Awesome! This is nice. I'm Vanu Sovereignty. I got the whole outfit going on. Yeah. Ah, yes. Woo. So, what do you think of the game? You got to play it. Okay, the main thing that makes games different, especially FPSs, and the one thing that I really like about Planet Side is the speed of the game. And that's that's just different between each right, game. Some games are fast, some games are slow, but Planet Side, I, I think they, they really nailed it as far as how quick it should be and how uh, how the gameplay should be played. It's, yeah, just the speed of the game is just amazing. I think you guys nailed that perfectly. Awesome. Well, we're glad that you enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the battlefield yeah, in the yeah. future. Thank you very much, Maggie, there. Well, needless to say, with a VS player, big surprise. That's a big surprise, yeah. Big surprise. Faction bias is the way that it goes. To be fair, though, this is something that I don't think anyone that hasn't played Planet Side really understands how how far faction bias really goes. Oh, it's deep. It really is. It is. It's yes. actually an intense thing for people. Yes, they keep they keep hold of their faction uh, loyalty for sure. And that's a good thing. It yeah, really it's does. One of the, it, it really is one of the great things about Planet Side. Uh, people really hold on to their faction and they uh, really get behind it. I think it has something to do with the, something to say about our community. Um, we have some of the best community members in the whole world, and uh, they they really help each other out. When you are playing for NC or TR or VS, you have your friends and your teammates that you are on the battlefield always. Since we are persistent, you get used to the names that you're playing with. Oh. You so TR Max just got flattened there by a Mag Rider. <laughs> That's one of the real problems with being a Max unit. It's, we've seen a lot of Maxes destroying people oh. indoors, but outdoors, yeah, you're a big fat target. Yep, I mean, he's running for his life. Yeah, and he's, he's not going to fight. He's just kind of waddling away. It's kind yeah. of pathetic, really, when you think oh, about it. Oh, he's kind of trying to run two Maxes over. I don't think he's going to fit through that hole. He's fortunate. Oh, he's Unfortunately, he's not getting direct oh, hits there. Oh, look at that. He got away. Yeah. Oh, he's actually, the Magra is actually taking a lot of damage from somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, there we go. That's a real tank right there. That is oh. the Terran Republic Prowler, largest tank in the game. Most guns on a tank in the game. As a double barrel turret, there are rumors that you're thinking of putting on a four barrel turret as a customization option. <laughs> they, our vehicle designer wants to have as much customization for the fans as possible, so... We are we, those are things that we are talking about all every day. So we're looking for an eight-barrel turret. <laughs> I wouldn't say no to that. <laughs> you never know. It could do. You see just down to the bottom right-hand corner there is the way that the game sustains itself. It is, of course, the store can be accessed using station cash, which is fairly easy to acquire, if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah. Got you a lot can, of different payment options. Yeah, you can... You can use station cash, you can use resor in game resources. Um, all our marketplace is right in the game within our UI, so it, we make it very easy for you to, to get any customizations that you want whenever you want them. And I found somebody friend is respawned now, he's going to pick himself a vehicle, see what he wants to get. We haven't seen a lot of success in the site as of yet, we'll see if he decides to go for that. Oh, looks like he wants the Liberator. I like the Liberator a lot. Um, you, do, you do need friends for yeah, that. Yeah, I've had the most fun in the Liberator in our playtest that we have in the studio. We get 
three people in a Liberator and just wreak havoc all over the facility. Yeah, so this thing is ridiculously maneuverable, which ends up being a bit unfortunate for some people, simply because it can be a bit tricky to fly. Yeah, they're not used to it at first. They really have to kind of get a grasp at how quick it turns and how fast it moves. Definitely a lot more maneuverable than the other two factions. Um, Empire-specific vehicle. Yeah, it can actually stop and turn on a dime, but it, it handles like it, or how you would think a UFO would handle. Definitely, yeah. It, it, it kind of looks like a UFO, actually. It does. And that's a... An uh, that's a side for you, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Right into the arm of the amp station. That has a tendency of happening with... New pilots for the Scythe is extremely <laughs> difficult to fly. Let's switch it over and see what the new conglomerate are doing right now. Probably being rebellious as usual. Now, again, what you're watching is they are all fighting over this, this amp station. They're all trying to control these points. Right now, you can see in the bottom left corner that the um, capture points, the NC have all three capture points, so they're really trying to defend the base and trying to keep the other two factions out of the base. Once one of the other two factions comes in, takes a capture point, it'll start. they'll start losing the base and they have to defend it before um, time runs out or those tickets get to the full. Yeah. In this case, what we've got is the capture points inside of this facility, but that's not always the case, is it? No. Um, each facility is actually very different. Um, the way we have this one set up for E3 is um, it could change at any time. Maybe sometimes, maybe when we get into beta, we'll change things around. Um, this one has three capture points. We might have six. Um, it all depends on how we want each facility to play. He was very fortunate right there, being saved by his teammate, which is going to happen more often than not. Being a lone wolf in planet side doesn't tend to get you very far. In this case, he managed to avoid the Terran Republic Max unit, which is then hunted down by no less than three new conglomerate troopers, including a Max unit of their own. Uh, I think he was dead there from the start. Indeed. It wasn't working out so well for him. I'd have stood and fight. He should have a turned around and at least tried to take one Absolutely. of them Absolutely. Yeah, that's the Terran Republic way. I'm rather embarrassed that he didn't. <laughs> You see the jetpacks in action there for the light assault. A good Still useful indoors, away. surprisingly. Yeah. yeah, it's a good tactic to use to try to get away just for a few seconds. Sometimes that's all you need is those few seconds. Facility in this case is actually huge. Yes, these facilities are very huge. Um, and this is just one facility in one corner of our map. Our maps are enormous much larger than what you're used to playing on any FPS game out there. Navigation could be a problem for some people. They're going to have to learn how to read a map. <laughs> Thankfully, you can spawn on your squad who hopefully know better than you do as to where you should be. Yeah. Got our position there by a Varnu Trooper taken out. Switch over to someone that looks just a little bit less dead. Looks like we got an NC light assault. Oh! oh speaking of dead, there we go. <laughs> Spawning at the forward garrison, something that's just available for this demonstration. Yeah. Um, you saw other spawns on that screen, that is their squad mates. You can have 10 people in your squad, and which gives you a lot of spawning options. If you don't want to spawn at the forward garrison, if it's getting defended really well, you can spawn on your squad. So he's going to just hoof it out there, which alternatively could actually ride in the second gun of the Magrider, but oh. no, no, he's driving off. Magrider ditched him. Just a few aircraft in the air. Just a few. And this is actually small scale in comparison to uh, what things are going to be when the servers go live. Oh, yes. This is, this is not big. You haven't seen big yet. You can shoot him. He is blue and yellow. I think he's trying to sneak he's up gonna on him before he's the, stab yeah, the melee attack. No, I, I think he thinks it's his yeah, friend. I think so. The Prowler begs to differ. I think Prowler just came in and got both those kills. As it should be. That's what we like. Now you'll notice there is a cooldown there. That is because squad spawning is limited. You can't just keep doing it. Yeah, we don't want it to be too overpowered where people are just always forward spawning on their squad mates. Um, it, it kind of breaks the gameplay. We want to make sure that when you have a planned attack, you can squ squat on your spawn and it's very useful. And um, Or like in some of these playtests, people are just spawning whenever they have the chance to. But I'm looking forward to seeing some people use a lot of good team play. Um, let's say you have 10 
uh, infiltrators and you have your squad leader go into the base and then all of a sudden the other nine guys spawn right on top of them and next thing you know you're infiltrating that base. Logistics is something that you have to actually consider in this first person shooter which is not usual really. It's yeah. Hey spawn get right back to the action. Well you can do that but where are you going to spawn? Yeah. People, people are really going to start learning um, Plant Side 2 is a lot more than just running and gunning like your normal first person shooter. There are people out there that use really advanced war tactics to kind of take a tank colony and move them towards a base. I mean, there's a lot of stra uh, strategy involved in taking some of these uh, facilities. Let's see if we can find someone a little bit closer to the action. We'll switch back over to the Terran Republic. There we go. Oh, he's found action. I don't think he's going to live very long. Oh. Uh, that's, that's embarrassing. That's costly. He was also killed by his friend. <laughs> Fr we should mention friendly fire, because yeah. that is a thing. Yeah. This, this game do does have friendly fire. Friendly fire is permanently on. Yes. Right now, people are able to shoot their teammates, though they shouldn't. But friendly fire is on, which adds a whole other element to Planet Side 2 when you are taking a facility. You have to make sure that you're not running in front of bullets. You have to make sure that you're coordinated. Down comes the drop pod. He's able to use his squad spawn right. Don't Oops. shoot him. <laughs> There's a traitor within the ranks. This is a perfect spot to try and no snipe with that max. I believe he's playing a somewhat heavier class. He does not have jump jets to get over that wall. He could use the handy elevator. Yeah. I think he should be able to jump over there if he got some momentum. Hasn't managed it just yet. We've got a heavy assault trooper on the wall simply using his rocket launcher to try and bring down some of the aircraft that are coming in overhead. There we go. a lot more of that. There we go. That's going to leave a mark. No, we're not going to go for that. Oh, for a soldier, he seems surprisingly combat averse. Oh. That would be because it's a max unit. You might want your friendly max unit to help out. He actually did a surprisingly good wow, job bringing yeah, that down. As you can see, the TR on, on the um, lower left corner actually have the lead for taking this facility. Um, but right now, A, B, and C is blue, so N, C actually control all three points, which means they can start taking the lead if they control those points long for a long time. Yeah, it's more like a total war scenario inside of each facility, and it can involve all three factions as it currently is. That is not where you want to uh -oh. be. He is in trouble. Yeah. He better hope oh, that... Wow, this guy is, well, this guy is good. He is. That and the fact I think that Max was actually using anti-vehicle weapons, which doesn't <laughs> tend to work all that well against an infantry unit. That's one of the other problems with the Max. You can have both of the same kind of weapon on each arm. Makes you incredibly powerful at one roll, but absolutely worthless at the others. Yeah, I like to switch it up. I like to have an anti-infantry gun on one arm and an anti-vehicle gun on the other arm. He's going for his third max kill in a row. He's doing pretty well at this. Wow. Three kill streaks. You can see on the top, he's doing really well. Very nice. Obviously, you get additional experience for that. Ah, there's one right there. Uh-oh. And he gets taken Finally, down. finally, he is taken down. It did take a while. Killed by a max unit. Actually, in custom camouflage there. You'll notice that a lot of the camouflage also becomes themed to the faction. Yes. Yeah, we have a lot of... We have our desert camo and our, and our um, jungle camo and things like that. But we also have our camo that um, have the empire colors. So you can kind of really look, look unique and look different in your favorite class. Absolutely. Your favorite vehicle. Let's toss it over to an interview with Maggie, and one of the guys has just got off playing Planet Side 2, so take it away. Hi, I'm with Sam. How are you doing, Sam? I'm good. What class did you get to, or what Empire did you get to play today? Uh, the Terran. The Terran, how'd you like it? I, I enjoyed it a lot. So, I really like the balancing that you guys have with the different vehicles. That was something that I really kind of... You like the balance of the vehicles? Yeah. yeah. So how you have like the ones that are faster, I turned up, like I, the Terrans turn a little bit faster, lay down fire a lot faster, right? And then what was the blue team with the blue gold team? Uh, new conglomerate? There you go, new conglomerate. They were hitting harder, but they were a lot slower when they were turning. So I was able to kind of get them to chase me around this rock. What do you think about the Vanu? The what? The Vanu? 
so like, they're, re they're really unique in how they strafe, right? So that's nice, it made them a lot harder to shoot, but they, they take a lot of damage, so I downed them pretty quickly. Yeah, especially if they're their butts to you. So what was your favorite moment so far? Well, I just, I like the scale of the battles, right? I mean, they're very large. When I was coming up, I guess when, even when I decided I wanted to play, I played Planet Side 1, I wanted to see like how large you guys made the scale. And the scale of everything's really nice. Uh, I think you guys did a really good job as far as the balance. So I just enjoyed the infantry combat and mostly driving the tank, exploding stuff, right? Yeah. Awesome, so you're a Planet Side player. Yes, yeah, I played the first one a lot. Awesome, well, there you have it. Thanks for joining me again. Oh, well, thank you very much, Maggie. We're just going to quickly pop back to the game. We're having a chair malfunction over here, which is interesting. I think the new conglomerate have been sabotaging the chairs, as they have a tendency to do. That's very uh, interesting that he was wearing red and he played TR as well, too. I like that. See? I think faction loyalty goes yeah. into fashion as well, mm -hmm. which is why I'm currently representing my chosen faction. Now, this is going to take him a while, I think, looking at this. Van has decided it might be a good idea to make it on foot with a beam of pistol. Looks like he's just trying out the various voice commands yeah. that are available in the game. He looks like he has a nice gold-plated customization on his uh, beamer as well. Yeah, he can do it. I'm going to hop on over to a different view at the moment. So we should try and find where the action is on 12 different stations now. That's what I'm talking about. A little bit of action going on here with the max unit. Looks like anti-infantry and anti-vehicle on the right arm there. Now, as you can see, when I first started uh, talking with you, it was nighttime. And now it's full daytime. And it's, something, it's a transition that people, like I said, aren't used to at first. But once it happens, it looks really cool when you're playing. And that, and that just starts to happen. Final Max unit using a Comet anti-vehicle, essentially energy mortar on the right arm there. Looks like he's trying to get some more resources so he can customize the right side of his arm too. Well, that new conglomerate's being caught out in the open. Probably not a good idea. Oh, the that's what we like to see. That is what we like to see. You guys win this round. We'll see. Oh, Max on Max combat coming in right here. A good combination for actually fighting against uh, another max unit. Yeah. Strong anti-armor oh, weaponry. Down he's, he goes. He's actually assisted by his friend behind him. Oh, oh my. He's going to be able to take a second one here. He said we were looking for some action. I think oh, we found, found it. it. Yeah. There we go. A second max unit now being taken down by the Vanu Sovereignty's own max. Doing a pretty damn good job of it. Now, max units can be repaired just like vehicles. Yes, they can be repaired with uh, by the engineer. The engineer is one of our support roles, and he is very useful. A, a good squad will always have some engineers and some medics with them. It's not always the best idea to have all light assault or all max units. Um, sometimes it's a lot more efficient to balance it out. He's on a bit of a tear at the moment, honestly. There is a not-so-friendly fellow around the side there. He's been dealt with there by a squad mate. At the moment, the Terran Republic currently holds Zervan Amp Station with two out of three points. The rogue flash makes its way past. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near this guy. He knows what yeah, he's no, doing. He knows what he's doing. Is this the guy we were looking at earlier? I think it was, actually. Previously, he was hunting Max units. Now he is one. <laughs> as dominant and as impervious as he looks at the moment, he can still very easily get caught out in the open by a vehicle and blown away. Now making his way into these various kind of substations that you'll find around the facility. Yeah. And as he runs through here, you'll notice all these buildings and all these objects are hand-placed by all of the level designers, um, myself included. And we really want to create a unique feel for each of our facilities. Uh, we want to make sure that every base that you fight over feels you unique. Than this. Show them. There we go. The Terran Republic has finally brought him down with a max unit of his own using two dual cyclers, one on each arm. Look at the camo customizations. There's the various weapons available. You can actually click those weapons too and, dra and move them around to see a 3D view. There we go. You can then see the changes that he's made. Orient 
attempts on to see what's going on. Let's flick over to another view here. Go back to the new conglomerate, see what they're up to, because quite frankly, on the capture points, they're nowhere to be seen, so I'm interested to know what they're doing. Oh, crashing. That's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, needless to say, in the full game, a Max Unit cannot fly a Reaver. Yeah, the, the, it, when we uh, start releasing um, the game, start getting into beta, we're going to make a lot of changes. This is a E3 build that we're letting people just try out everything in the game. As the burster on the left hand side, a rather large piece of anti air flak technology. Like rather useful for bringing down aircraft. Yep. Such as that one right there. It takes a little bit of skill to use this. You've actually got to lead the target, but it doesn't have a lock on warning, which makes it quite powerful. Yeah, you're not actually trying to hit the target, you're trying to get the flak explode near the vehicle so it does the most damage. All in C to capture point Charlie. Capture point Charlie. Well, oh, now he's getting hit by a yeah, Liberator, Yeah, this is oh, where you don't want to be. Oh, it's a Prowler, there, there you go. go. He's a little dead. I can still see a couple of kinks in the system. Oh, yeah. Tends to be always happening. some kinks, they'll always get ironed out. Yeah, well, we should point out this is, of course, still in Alpha. Yeah, this is Alpha, which is very impressive. Um, a lot of games try to get this clean before getting into beta, which is a good idea. Well, the facility has been successfully defended currently by the Terran Republic. Holding on to that facility will give them numerous benefits. Why don't you talk a little bit about how the actual territory system works in this game? So, we have a map that has... each part of the map is capturable. And when you capture a piece of the map, you own that territory. That territory gives you resources, which you then use to buy things in the game. Such as attachments or unlocks, um, things of that nature. Everything in the game is unlocked through these resources. That's, the game is completely 100% free to play, so you can play as much as you want, get as much territory as possible, use the resources to unlock everything in the game. You don't have to, you don't have to buy a thing. Um, but basically the point of the game is to capture these bases so you have the territory and to get the resources that you want. This particular base might give you a lot of Araxium, and so that's why they want to take this base first, because now that they have Araxium they can get the, the unlocks that they need for their squad to, to help them take over another part of the base. Yeah, so the bases that you take have tactical considerations. Yes. See a light assault trooper who's being a bit of a machine right there with the repeater pistol. At least he was. Yeah. Something I don't know about that, that, mach that, that machine pistol. It seems a little powerful. Yeah, it seems sufficiently powerful <laughs> for a Terran Republic soldier as far as I'm concerned. Speaking of powerful, nothing like two Maxes running together. Yeah, that can be a bit dangerous. The, the original game had, there was a bit of terminology called the Max Crash, oh, which yes. was yes, adopted by the players. And it was a term simply for getting a large number of Maxes to run as a unit, usually into the back door of a facility, to storm it, essentially. Yeah, you would get these fights in Plan Side 1 where they wouldn't be able to get uh, through this tower. They were trying to take this tower and there was just a huge stalemate. So what they would do is they would grab a bunch of these maxes and they would just rush in through the front door kind of like just with brute force just to get in there and cause cause just insane chaos. And once they did that, it, it um, caused enough of a stir that they actually got to take the tower, which was a major point into taking the base. And it, it was made up by the players, which is what we always love. Tactics that are made up by the players once the game comes out. Yeah, using the tools that you actually have. Galaxy Hot Dropping, of course, being another. That was one of the most awe-inspiring sights in Planet oh, Side yes. 1. Very iconic. The idea of dropping an entire squad, including max units, on top of a facility to actually storm it from the top down. And in this game, you can have 20 galaxies coming in. I mean, just because we have so many players, thousands of players, we're going to see some amazing galaxy drops in this game for sure. Looking forward to that. It was also my favorite part of Planet Side 1, I think. Yeah, and another thing, when you used a galaxy drop in Planet Side 1, the pilot would have to ditch his galaxy because he wants to join the fight also. In this game, you can galaxy drop and then the pilot can land and use the galaxy as a deployment uh, vehicle. Yeah, the vehicle's not so disposable as yeah, it was he prior. So now, so now the, the pilot doesn't have to just get rid of his galaxy when everybody drops out of it. Those of you who've just tuned in, you are currently watching live stream of Planet Side 2 right here from the show floor in E3. We are in the West Hall. 
We are just as you come in. It's kind of hard to miss us, honestly. So if you have to be attending E3 maybe tomorrow, if you're here right now, then do come and say hi. We have theater presentations as well as many stations which you can play all three factions on. Yep, we also have a theater showing a nice demo of the game. Watch the demo on the theater, and then come in and try the game out yourself and also get a beta key, which is the key prize of our oh, yes. display here. That's what you want to get. At the moment, this Max unit is doing rather well for himself, sensibly staying with his squad mates. Yeah, I think people are finding that this dual chain gun Max is very effective. It tends to be. Uh, I find if you throw a lot of bullets in the general direction of something, it has a tendency to fall over. It's yeah. Fortunately, he's actually lacking resources, as you can see in this corner. Yeah, so... You can't... You've got to be careful with your vehicles in this game. You can't just throw them away. They're going to cost you resources, which you've earned throughout your campaign. You'll, of course, earn more resources as you go along, but... Yeah, you'll always be learn You'll always be earning resources, but you don't want to just throw vehicles away. You, when you spawn a vehicle, you should have a general goal of what you want to do, and not just use it as just a throwaway, because you will be spending resources to get these vehicles. Well, someone's managed to find a way to deal with that, and it looks like it, that's actually Mag... I think that's Mag Rider shelling from the side there. He doesn't want to go anywhere near that. It's best to keep your anti-infantry max indoors where it's most effective. Well, unfortunately, it does have a tendency of being a bit of a rocket magnet. Yep. It's funny that he was out of resources because for E3 we wanted to give all these machines tons of resources. So you can see how many people are playing this game. They're all spawning a lot, of, a lot of vehicles. They already ran out of resources. Still fairly effective outside. We've got it's actually run out of bullets for his left arm weapon. Yeah, it looks like he needs a light assault to drop some ammo for him. Look at a lot of TR all together here. That would and explain why we still the got the facility. Man, the TR are defending this facility very well. I think, these, I think the people who are playing TR know each other. They're playing very well together. TR loyalty never goes away. It's a lifetime thing. It is for life, not just for Christmas. Pesky little flies there. Trying to I fly know, away. I can already tell those are going to annoy me the most. <laughs> That's why you need some skilled snipers on your team to shoot them out of the sky. I just want to do with a tank. That might work too. That would be good. Well, unfortunately, the Maxion is rapidly running out of ammo. He's already lost ammunition for his left weapons and really needs a resupply quite desperately. Now, if if you see if somebody sees him on his screen, he'll have a little HUD piece open over his name that has these little ammo slots. So it tells the people that he needs ammo. Um, so when it when a light assault comes up to him and sees that little icon he'll know to drop some ammo next to him because he needs it. Same goes for healing. If a medic runs around, he'll see these little uh, health health icons near the people that need help. Flick on over to someone who has a few more bullets available for them. There we go. I'm not surprised that people's favorite thing to do is run around with the max. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly popular yeah, unit. Yeah, it's very popular. The thing about the Max, though, is they can't t capture the capture points. Yeah. So if if all of TR is running around in these Maxes, but VS happens to take A, B, or C, they're just going to hold it because they, the Maxes won't be able yeah. to take it back. One of the drawbacks with having a big, uh, heavily armored yeah. walking tank like this. That, and if you end up going up against a lot of Max units, what you'll tend to find is that players will start to switch roles into a setup, a specification that is more useful against Max units. Yeah. Max units are slow. They don't have a lot of flexibility. Oh yeah, they're they're definitely um, situational. That situation being, if you just want to kill everybody in a room, which just happens to be a good situation for this fight. Very useful, without question. Max suddenly caught just a little bit unawares. The Terran Republic holding this facility extremely well. We currently have all three capture points available. And we're going to be heading on over to a quick interview while there's a lull in the action here with Maggie. Take it away. Hi, I'm here with Peter. And Peter, what faction did you get to play today? Oh, you were here, right? That's the new conglomerate. So what did you think about the game? It was great. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, simple. It was fun. What was your favorite part? Killing people. Killing people, yeah. That's good, that's awesome. Um, did you play the original planet side at all? No, 
I didn't. I, this is the first time I played, so I never heard of it before. Awesome. So what drew what drew you in? I don't know. There's a lot of people out here playing, so and it looks fun. And yeah, we have some people. I think he's upset that you didn't remember what faction you were. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming on screen with us, and we'll get back to you guys. Thank you very much, Maggie. Uh, very nice. Very killing well people. Killing people is is fun. I tend yeah. to enjoy that. It's it's a useful part of any first person shooter. I tend to find the ability to kill a person or a vehicle. Or yeah, I, th I think that's a, the main point of this game. It helps. Yeah, it helps a lot. It is a helpful f piece of functionality. Well, how on back in game here? If you have a Vanu infiltrator who is currently infiltrating this lone desert location, infiltrating his own. Little forward vanguard base. Well, they're not going to get very far. He's just on on patrol. He's yes. guarding it. He's g guarding, looking for fellow infiltrators that might be trying to sneak in. Yes, which is another good tactic. Having some stealth infiltrators go behind enemy lines or just sneak up on you. Ridiculously, you ridiculously good for capturing points. Yes, they are the anti-max, I would say. Oh yeah, very much so. Let's find something with a bit of heavier fire Bowser. Yeah, another max. People are loving the max units of this one. <laughs> no doubt about that. Once again, we should stress that maxes will not be able to do this in the real game. No, yeah, we're just letting players do this for E3, just to let to show them how all the the possibilities. We don't want to handcuff people while they're trying out the game for the first time. Yep. This Mac Rider is customized with a separate camouflage. And he has a hood ornament. He does, actually. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can do that. Yeah, we have lots of customization options um, from the desert camo, the jungle camo, all the way to the zebra camo. So they I wouldn't recommend rolling. the zebra camo, though. You might get seen a little bit too easily. Yeah, I think that, that might be an option that people who are just a little bit daring may go yeah, for. Yeah, it's kind of an arrogant camo. Just saying, you know so. what, I'm going to wear zebra stripes. So you still can't kill me. Like green headlights on the Magarite, it's ever camo, <laughs> BS hood ornaments. Yeah. We definitely see him rolling. At the moment, the Vano are doing fairly well, at least with their vehicle dominance. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's some massive explosions. Oh, hello. Off. Here we go, it's a Prowler tank. I think it's a Prowler. Yeah, it's it like, like a Prowler. Yep. Tell by the silhouette versus the Vanu there with his powerful front-mounted railgun. Yep. Oh, it's going to be close. Look at oh. it. Came down to the last shot. Yes, it is. But as I was saying, the sound in this game is incredible. When he goes outside of this facility and he hears all the bombs being dropped, it sounds really good. And when he goes inside, he can still hear all of the explosions on the outside, kind of echoing yeah. inside the base. We should That's also point out, line. of course, those sounds are actually coming. That was a pleasant. That was, yeah. That was it, it didn't have a lot of armor left on it. Those sounds are actually coming from the fighting that's going on itself. Yeah. There's nothing just thrown in there as background noise. No, yeah. Noise. No, we don't it's have real. any script, scripted gameplay here. There's no sounds being played. It's all natural gameplay that you're hearing and seeing, as it should be. A little bit of an unusual approach to taking down a max unit there, using the anti-infantry burst cannon. Yep. This guy's got style, though. He's he's customized both of his weapons. Very nice. Everyone knows customized weapons are uh, much more effective. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a hug. Give, just give him a oh, hug. Oh, the flamethrower. Oh, my. This is not going to go well for the <laughs> TI field. I have a feeling that guy's out of ammunition. Yeah. It's just like, please. Please kill me. That could be arranged. There we go. There he goes. It's something of a prime target, however. Oh, and he got killed by somebody using a turret. Nothing wrong with that. That was a man turret, by the way. An engineer had to deploy that. See up there, someone attempting to fly a galaxy. I use the it word fly loosely. Yeah, he looks like me trying to fly a galaxy. I'm not it's very good at it. Yeah, I was looking a little bit hopeless there for him for a little bit. Oh, the Mag Rider didn't see him, snuck right by. Oh, no, he's VS. Well, considering what we've seen from our players today, I don't think that really matters. <laughs> That's true. Some of these players are getting thrown right into the fight. Oh, yeah. I've never played Planet Side before. Not really used to three-faction warfare. Which I feel, I can't believe people never, have never experienced this. If you haven't experienced a true MMO FPS like this, it is 
You oh, never go. You never want to go back. I it's mean, not it's, a common thing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's been that thing that so many development companies have been chasing for the longest time. It's yeah. very very difficult to do because the technology just wasn't there yet. Yeah, and then your flow doesn't get stopped. We on other games we would have had to stop and restart the map at least yeah, twenty it, times a new by round. Now. Yeah, a new the, round. And there are no rounds. Playing. I mean, people just keep going and going and going. Our persistent world lets us do that. Yeah, it's the idea of hop being able to hop into a fight that you did last <laughs> night and see how far it's continued on. Exactly. It never stops. It's going to be a bit exhausting, so do remember to take regular breaks. Yeah. It's almost like the empires have to get together and take shifts. All right. Agree to a tea break. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Well, the Vanu are not... Oh, they're doing okay on the capture point. In fact, actually, all the teams are. Yeah, they all each have one. Yep. In a big organized game, when the servers go live, you'd expect outfits to be saying, right, well, our, our capture point is going to be B. We're going to go there. We're going to hold it. We're going to make sure that that is the place that we are going to situate our defenses. Yep. And uh, later, uh, post-launch, we're going to have commanders just basically telling people to do this. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a mission system basically telling them, hey, you guys, you 30 guys, go to control B. And if you successfully control B, you get have a bonus resources, you know, things like that. And so we'll also have these player-controlled missions so the more experienced commanders can tell all of the um, less experienced players what to do on any given fight. Things are about to get unpleasant for our Vanu soldier right here as he drops right on top of two Terran Republic Max units. The TR Maxes are just taking over. I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> I was actually an anti-vehicle Max there, but honestly, in that enclosed space, it really doesn't make much difference. Yeah, I mean... When you get a hit of a rocket in the face, a couple of them, it's not going to be good. Switch on over to a different view, shall we? See so what the new conglomerate are up to. Well, they're not capturing much, you can tell you that for a fact. Nope. Once again, the... There's a sitting duck. He eventually gets the kill. Seems the new conglomerate don't actually teach their soldiers how to aim. That's a very unfortunate problem for them. Sensibly staying indoors, unfortunately, gunned down by a far superior faction. I'm not liking all this TR domination. I need to see my guys step it up here. Need some new conglomerate pros on here. It's an example of the galaxy being used as a spawning point. This large dropship that can carry an entire squad can also be used to spawn into a battle. Yep, which is a very good forward spawn. This is, kind of, this is the type of forward spawning that we want players to use. We want them to all get together, get in the galaxy, find a nice place to land, or drop out and then have the pilot land it for a spawn. Yeah. Although bear in mind, it's it can be quite dangerous to land something of that size yeah. in the middle of a battle. Definitely, especially with, in this area with all these barracks around. Yep. It's a priority for a lot of players just to bring the galaxy down before it's able to do that. Yeah. A little bit of an air battle going on over there. And as you look at this um, uh, battlefield, you see all these rocks far off in the distance, and players can go to any of these spots. This is all open area. Uh, anything is, is good. It's fair play anywhere you can look. Yeah, it's not, not, seeing, not something we're seeing an awful lot of in the demonstration at the moment because it's very much based around this, this one account. facility, but this entire content has a lot of different biomes and areas that are designed for different kinds of warfare. Uh, exactly, yeah. I mean, in, in a live play, when this facility gets captured or defended, players are going to take all of their troops and move over these canyons and keep going to the next fight and nothing's going to change. It's all going to still be persistent. You're just going to flow the battlefield uh, throughout the continent. You're going to find areas where tank warfare just isn't an option. You'll have to go on foot simply because the terrain is too rough. You're going to find other areas which are large open plains, very good for large-scale tank battles. Yeah. There are there. There's definitely plenty of that on this continent. There's there's pl open spaces for air to air. There's um, nice open ground spaces for the tanks to fight, um, where a, a max out in the open would just get uh, picked off by a, a prowler or a mag rider. He's been picked off. This new conglomerate soldier has managed to sneak his way into the base. Very impressive. Yeah. See if he can actually capture point A. It's 20 meters away. Is there anyone defending it? Oh. Yes. Hello. That's an opportunity yeah. for him. I think he got assist killed right there. 
Yeah, actually, I think the Vanu helped out there. That looked like a Mag Rider <laughs> shot. He doesn't want to be standing there. No, 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 no. The Mag Rider's going for both kills. Yep. And he's going to get it, by the looks They so. defended their point very well. That's a hard point to get. It's very, it's 360 um, open, so hard to defend, or hard to uh, capture. Certainly does the job. Thankfully, he does have the ability to spawn on squad here. He doesn't have that on cooldown, so he's going to be dropping down momentarily in his drop pod. And I love our new drop pods. They're nice. They, they can land like on people, right? Yeah, they can land on people. They can destroy. I destroyed a plane in midair as it went underneath me in a playtest once. Very nice. Now this is a light assault with the uh, jetpack ability, as you've probably seen a couple of times already. Ooh, oh. that got a little <laughs> bit close. close. Those are, I love those moments in plant side when you're just running, and the next thing you know, these aircraft are flying right over your head. And they can kill you, and they will. Mm -hmm. Prime targets there. It really depends how you set your aircraft up. The scythe can be set up for ground attack, can be set up for air attack, or a mixture of the two. Yeah, yeah that both was a primary and secondary weapon. That was a common tactic in Plant Side 1. People would, the commanders would tell their um, platoons to kind of uh, go over the area and look for uh, infantry that are kind of just walking about. You see a Vanguard tank, the main battle tank of the new conglomerate. Very powerful tank, probably the hardest hitting of all three. Yeah, th that's what the new conglomerate's all about. Um, as you can see, they shoot one one massive bullet at a time through this vanguard, and when you get hit by it, it hurts. Oh yes, that it does. Taking quite a lot of fire from the air, as you Oops. can see, uh, rocket shelling from what looked to be, well, it, I couldn't tell if it was friendly or anything. It's most nope. likely a mosquito. Yeah, it looks like a mosquito. Like. They could be outfitted for ground attack rolls. Oh. He does have two anti air cannons. This would be a perfect opportunity to use them. Just up a little oh, bit. Just up a little bit. <laughs> up a bit. There, there you go. go. There you go. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, there you go. He got it. He'll assist on it. Incredibly dangerous. Oh. When you see some of those bigger explosions, that's usually from a Liberator really up high, dropping bombs down. Yep, guided rockets as well. Liberator actually has three you positions you can stand in. You can actually yeah, have the pilot seat with the main gun. We have the pilot seat, the bomber seat, and the tail gunner. And the tail gunner is really fun too. A lot of people really like the bomber seat because it's really you get these really big explosions, you get a lot of kills. But the tail gunner is good too. It's really fun to kind of pick off the uh, mosquitoes or the scythes around the air. Yeah, you can also customize each of those positions with various different kinds of gun. Perhaps if you want a tail gun that's designed for taking out tanks, you could maybe have a heat round in it. It's a good position for this max unit to actually be in. There's an awful lot of targets for him to bring down. I'm fairly sure he shot a few friendlies, but yeah. we can forgive him for that. Looks like he took down that mosquito very nicely. Right, they're taking an awful lot of flak fire from the ground there. Now would be the time to leave. Yeah. It's bleeding pretty badly, but those are much, much tougher. Nope. Now, that is not wise. That is a prowler. That's where you don't want to be. He's running away. I don't think he's, he's getting away anytime soon. <laughs> oh, it looks he's like he's even an infiltrator sniping him from the top. He's yeah, having a very bad day. You can see the laser right on his forehead. Yep, he thinks he's about to go down. I think so. A goodbye. A valiant effort. Killed by everybody, <laughs> by the looks of it. <laughs> A Prowler, a Mosquito, and a Sniper on the roof there. I wouldn't be surprised if those were some of his enemies that he shot down in the sky previously, coming back for Most revenge. likely. While we have a lull in the action, we're going to go over to yet another player that's nice. just got off the station there. He's going to be talking to Maggie about his experience with the game, so take it away. Hi, I'm with Joe right now, and he just played Planet Side 2. He's playing for quite a while, so I thought maybe he'd like to... Tell us what he thought about the game. What faction did you play, first of all? Uh, TR. I'm a TR loyalist from the original, so... Awesome. So you played the original game? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I love the original, and this is just like a dream come true, seeing it to this level. I, the scale is something that you just can't explain to somebody who hasn't played the uh, planet side before, so it's just seeing this, it's... I'm almost speechless. I have not playing it right now. I can play it all day unless you guys kick me off. So. I know. You, you, you're welcome to go back and play. But yeah, our game has thousands of players, so it's not just, you know, a 64 map. So what was your favorite thing that you got to do today? I think the max units were probably the most fun I've had. Those, those things are just tear it up out there, and 
You can move pretty fast in them, which I like. They're even faster than the original, it seems like. So, uh, But really, just going through all the different classes, the, the light assault with the jump jets, I mean, that's a whole new thing. That really brings in some of the tribes that I love into the game, and it's just seeing all the scale. Like, you look up, and there's a firefight going on in the sky, and a tank battle gun on over here. Just the epic scale of it all is just amazing. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and going on camera. All right, we're going to go head back to Total Biscuit and Clegg. True like fan right there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. He yeah. knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I, I, like he says, you don't really, you can't explain it to somebody unless they've actually experienced it's it. It's difficult because yeah, I, I you mean, don't, there, it, this doesn't exist really. It doesn't exist unless you play Plant Side 1. I mean, when you fight with a thousand players, you just can't explain it. You know, you're, you're playing 32 players, 64 players, and then now all of a sudden a thousand. So. Now, I'm going to switch to a view we haven't actually seen yet. That is oh, the... the that is a Liberator Gunner right there. Look at that, taking out some maxes. Yeah, he's using a massive mortar cannon mounted to the bottom of the Liberator. It essentially acts as a gunship. You can customize that cannon with different types of weapon. He's In this a, case... He's got a very good pilot, uh, doing some nice hover movements. And like I said earlier, this is a really fun... That's why I like the Liberator. It's a really fun uh, seat to be in. Yeah, certainly. It does take quite a lot of coordination. It's one of the harder vehicles to master because the pilot is going to have some synergy with his two gunners to make sure they get optimal lines of fire. Yeah, and we have a voice over IP system built into the game, so when two people hop in a Liberator, they can immediately start talking to each other over their headsets. Extremely handy, considering. That kind of communication is really required if you want to have effective Liberator gunning. But just, whoa, hello! Oh. That got a little bit crazy very fast. Yeah, communication is important in Plant Side 2. You really need to talk to your teammates and to explain to them what you're trying to do, what you're trying to capture. Well, these guys don't even need to communicate about looks of it. They know exactly what they're doing. This all these guys on a seven kill streak. Oh, hello. Uh -oh. Black's not to detonate. He needs to get out of there. Oh, he got him. Oh, oh he bailed out. I. You know, you got a bit of scan there. I, I'm kind of surprised. The Liberator could have taken a lot more hits than that. <laughs> He's oh. now made his way up and appears to have got stuck behind a railing of my arch nemesis. <laughs> this is actually kind of funny because the Maxes aren't, aren't going to be able to jump over that railing, so... No, I think he's fallen into a really awkward spot. <laughs> that guy's just making a mockery of him at the moment. That's quite cruel, really, but he did pick the wrong faction. Yeah. One of the things... One of the problems when he let people fly with Maxes, so... Yeah, we have saw actually a wrecked galaxy gunship in the center there. Yep. Oh, there you go. That's what you need to do. That is what you need to do. But that was some quite impressive Liberator was, going yeah, for a while. It's a good example. Now, just think about that. Think about the fact that there can be another guy inside. And then consider that there can be a hundred more of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just even ten of those, more of those, would be amazing. It's, but it's crazy. Like, yeah. it, I remember Platoon play, which was a platoon in Planetside.